So, a few months ago I ran an experiment where I was looking to figure out which cup was the hardest in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Now in that video I only covered the base game cups because, well, the booster pass hadn't fully released yet, but with Wave 6 releasing recently, I thought it was about time we found out which booster pass cup was the hardest. Now the booster pass adds a whole game on top of the base one, with a further 12 cups to race through. As I did with the previous experiment, I raced through each of these cups 50 times in a row. Yes, I have no friends, but I did this to make sure I had a decent sample size as well well as an accurate average. I took the average placements of each race and my final point total after each cup and averaged them across the 50 runs to figure out which of these booster pass cups was the hardest. Now in my last video I kept things pretty simple. I played as Mario with the standard cart, normal wheels and super glider. But this is the DLC we're talking about, which not only added all these updated tracks but also a plethora of returning and new playable characters. So I thought, well let's spice it up this time, why not? So we're going to be playing as Tanuki Mario in the standard cart with normal wheels and the super glider. A few more things, smart steering is turned off and we'll be racing through each of these cups on 200cc for maximum challenge. Now before we begin, let me just address something. A lot of people in my last video kept calling me out for being ass. And you know what? That was fair. But don't worry, I've been practicing. I leaned forward in my gaming chair, gripped my controller with three hands, and grinded to the point where I only ever placed first. Now Wave 1 brought us two cups, the first of which was the Golden Dash Cup. Unlike the base game, where I had a pretty good idea which cups were easy and which ones were going to be hard, this set of cups I honestly had no idea how they drank when going into this experiment. The cup starts with Paris Promenade, and well, these city courses are from Mario Kart Tour, which I've probably played for about 2 hours tops. So yeah, I wasn't doing too hot during my first races. The track itself has its fair share of tight turns that can add some difficulty, but the most interesting part is the fact that this course changes with each lap. The most obvious iteration being during the final lap. These mix-ups certainly make this a more challenging first track than say Mario Kart Stadium from the Mushroom Cup. Now despite that, Mario Kart Stadium dunks on this next track, Toad Circuit. <sighs> I mean, why was this track even added? It feels like a Mushroom Cup track? Actually no, it's even worse than a Mushroom Cup track. The roads are ultra wide, the turns are a joke, and the only interesting part is the collider section, which are never difficult to begin with. Choco Mountain. Cool track, but it's definitely not built for 200cc. This track takes some of its changes from Tor and merges them with the original 64 track. So unfortunately there's no cute shortcut over the ledge here and there's no weather tankers either. When it comes to the track itself, it's not the hardest. It does require a bit of brake drifting however, especially during these early turns as well as the turns coming out of the boulder section, which can mess you up quite a bit if you drift too late. Now the cup finishes with a fan favourite, Coconut Mall. For the most part this track's not too bad. There are a few tighter turns to look out for in 200cc, particularly regarding this goddamn fountain. Not only does tricking off this thing make the next turn extremely tight, unless you're brake drifting, but it also just has some sus physics. No shot! What the f Yeah, I avoided this thing like the plague. At the end of it all, I came out of the Golden Dash Cup with an average of 55.88 points. At the moment, that's just an arbitrary number and doesn't mean too much. What I can say is that out of these specific tracks, I found Choco Mountain to be the most difficult with an average placement of 1.55. Next up is the Lucky Cat Cup, which once again offers a nice diversity of tracks from previous games. The first of these is Tokyo Blur. Now, the fact that it's a tour track or city track means that it switches up its layout lap by lap, and that's pretty much all it has going for it. The roads are extremely wide and the turns are very forgiving. Adding thwomps onto the track is cute, but let's be real, these things aren't squishing anyone. The difficulty picks up quite a bit with this next track though, Shroom Ridge. If brake drifting around the sharper turns wasn't hard enough, you have to do it while avoiding peak hour traffic. This guy in particular always seems to be in the right place at the right time. Ah, oh, Dude, why is this guy always there? The hardest part is most definitely the set of tight turns just before the finish line. Meaning if you screw up here, you're most likely going to lose some placement points. Sky Garden. Sounds like a decently challenging track, right? I mean it's in the sky, so surely there will be a bunch of tight turns and gaps for you to fall off. Nope, this track is pretty plain. It is in the sky, but the turns are extremely wide, to the point where you don't even have to brake drift. I will say this little shortcut can be a bit of a bait on 200cc as you could very easily go flying off the map if you try and boost through it with a mushroom but I'm probably just not very good at it. Definitely the easiest track in this cup though I'd say. Now while Sky Garden didn't live up to its name, Ninja Hideaway sure does. Why is that you ask? Well this one in particular track has three tracks packed into one. They just don't show themselves unless they need to fuck you over. 
Seriously, the number of times these platforms shift or ramps appear out of nowhere makes it seem like I'm racing a separate track every lap. The turns are rough, the track has plenty of hazards or areas where you can fall off, and the beams are thin to the point where bananas become god tier items. Honestly, this track may have brought out some masochistic tendencies within me, because despite getting tortured by it, I had a lot of fun racing through it. Now what was looking to be a somewhat easy cup at the beginning got flipped on its head by Ninja Hideaway. I ended up averaging 53.94 points, meaning it's at least harder than the Golden Dash Cup. Ninja Hideaway, to no one's surprise, was by far the hardest track in this cup. The turn up cup, huh? Honestly, it's a good thing we aren't ranking the names of these cups because most of the ones on this booster pass are pretty lame. My trash taste aside, this cup opens up with New York Minute. Now as was the case with Tokyo Blur, this is one of the easier tour tracks. The turns aren't particularly sharp and the roads give plenty of space to drift through. It does offer some hazards in the form of Goombas and a few taxi cars that can disrupt you, but in most cases that isn't likely to happen. Why are you Circuit 3, huh? From Super Mario Kart. I wonder how they've spliced this one up. Oh, they, they didn't. This track is as bare bones as you can get, honestly. There's hardly anything to say about it. It has maybe one sharp turn, which is a cakewalk if you break drift around it, and outside of what, like one or two oil spills? There's nothing else that could particularly screw you up. Calamari Desert, on the other hand, has definitely been spiced up. The first lap is simple enough, but going into the second and third lap, the game allows you to do what I'd recommend everyone try at least once in their life, drive towards a train while on its own tracks. This can certainly catch you off guard, and the wiggle room to avoid it can be quite tight at times, especially when you've got assholes pumping you with squid ink. The cup finishes off with one of the best tracks from my personal favourite Mario Kart, Waluigi Pinball. Now in saying that, you know I'm going to be god tier at this track. All joking aside, this track is pretty easy. Brake tripping is required to get through the long winding turns, but apart from those, there's not much else to challenge you here. The Turner Cup ended up being one of the easier cups, with me averaging 55.98 points across the 50 runs. New York Minute was the most difficult, and that's mainly due to the other three just being rather simple to race through. We zoom over to the Propeller Cup, which to me has the cutest icon out of them all. Not that it matters, but I mean, just look at him. Oh baby, a home ground advantage. As a resident of this sacred place, I should be familiar with this track. I mean, I've driven through the Sydney Opera House before, I've drifted around Luna Park before, so tell me why am I so dog shit at this course? I have to say that this track has one of the more confusing layouts, and the slim park roads that teeter around the harbour were extremely challenging for me. Oh my god, dude, I actually suck. I walked these parts as well. Despite knowing these areas well, I have to say that Sydney Sprint was a pretty tough course. The same can't be said about Snowland though. This is a very short and simple track. I assume there's some sliding effects here, but I couldn't actually tell when driving through it. The turns are very lax, and the hardest part outside of drift breaking these zigzag roads is this penguin. He most of the time is good, but sometimes no. just wants to be an arsehole. Up next is Mushroom Gorge, and with the amount of time I spent playing Mario Kart Wii, this one was another gimme. I do like that they added a cool collider section with the blue mushroom, which I assume was added in Tor because <laughs> everything in the DLC is just taken from Tor, but this makes the track even simpler than it already is, just being able to glide over the rest of the mushroom area. None of the turns are particularly sharp, and the only thing that could screw you up is maybe missing a jump on the mushrooms themselves. We finish up with Sky High Sunday, which marks the first new original track to be released in this DLC. Now based on its layout, this track is just a glorified baby park, or excite bike arena. Unlike those two tracks though, this one's decently challenging. The most obvious case being the fact that there's literally no railings, you can fall off anywhere. It also hides certain areas outside of your field of view, which can be confusing at first, especially when you've never actually raced on this track before. Wait, where am I going? Oh, okay, cool. Sweet. Overall, a decently challenging track, especially when compared to the other oval shaped tracks. At the end of my 50 races, I ended up with an average of 55.06 points, placing it somewhere in the middle of the pack in terms of difficulty so far. As embarrassing as it is to say, I found Sydney Sprint to be the most difficult track out of this bunch. Next up is the Rock Cup, which starts off with the London Loop. And I gotta say, I love that they made it somewhat realistic with the overcast weather. As for the track itself, it's definitely not the hardest. The roads are very wide, and outside of a few sharp turns in the final lap, it's not too bad. The chain trumps going on strolls can be intimidating, but who cares when you can just drive through them? Well, wait, I guess you can only do that sometimes. Now going into Boo Lake, I thought it would be a lot harder than it truly was. I mean, surely all these gaps would prove annoying in 200cc, right? Well, that wasn't really the case. Honestly, there's maybe one or two sharp turns that you need to brake drift around, but outside of that, the gaps themselves aren't really placed in areas where you typically find yourself if you were driving 
the course properly. Overall, this proved to be one of the easiest tracks in the cup. Alpine Pass was similar in this sense, and yes, it's called Alpine Pass Down Under. Regardless of the regional differences, this track should be universally known as Track Flyover, because that's what you'll be doing 80% of the time. The track is essentially two long glider sections, and then an uphill drive towards boulders that drop about as frequently as my uploads. The cup finishes off with an absolute banger, Maple Treeway. Now, if you're actually good at this track, unlike me, this track isn't too bad. The added speed in 200cc does make some old sharper turns tougher to get around. This one in particular got me a few times, but in general, a lot of this track is fairly manageable with wide turns and a forgiving track layout. Overall, the Drock Cup proved to be one of the easier cups with me averaging 55.67 points. The tour tracks are cleaning up the hardest track spots with London Loop continuing this trend. We move into Outer Space for the Moon Cup, which not only acted as the final cup released in 2022, but as the final cup in Wave 3, and you know what that means. Fuck! Before we get to that, we have to race through Berlin Byways. Dude, where am I? I can't see, man. Ah, of course. If you were to ask me to describe this track, it'd be Hazard Hell. As you saw, there's plenty of cars taking up space, but on top of that, there's swamps, there's these annoying tree patches in the middle of turns that I'm trying to drift around, and even some womps trying to crush any semblance of confidence you had left. All of these things combined with the pressure of performing well for, uh, these spectators I'm guessing, makes this a fairly challenging track. Peach Gardens. I always did enjoy this track scene. It's so soothing and fun, which somewhat mimics the track itself. It's definitely not the hardest, but it's still fun to race through, with a few tougher sections like the Monty Mole turns towards the end. The final lap going in reverse is a nice touch, but it honestly makes the track a whole lot easier, as you can just glide through the whole maze section, which may not be the most difficult in its own right, but it's definitely harder than just gliding over it. Merry Merry Christmas everyone. Oh shit, sorry, I meant Merry Mountain everyone. A fitting track name to race through during this holiday season. Well, it would be if it was actually fun or challenging. Ignoring the fact that half this course is just one long straight road with a glider section attached to it, the other side of things isn't too much harder either. I guess you could fall off during these winding turns, but when compared to the large majority of other tracks, this one just falls flat. We're on to the big boy now, 3DS's Rainbow Road. Arguably one of the best rainbow roads in my opinion, if not the best. The question is though, does it live up to the prestige that comes with that name? Ah, oh, too tired for this track. As is the case with the majority of Rainbow Roads, you can essentially fall off anywhere. Wait, what's that? You want to drive in peace? Nope, screw you, here's some holes in the road. What about Saturn Zring? That's probably a cool thing to drive on. Oh wait, no, there's some gaps here as well. Ah, finally. A solid surface to drive through. Oh, nope, never mind. There's some sporadic change on balls here that kind of just f*** you up. Honestly, this track took me a few times to hit first place in. But I mean, how could it not when I'm getting cheesed like this? Well, hit me then. Why is it taking so long? Hurry! You can't be f***ing serious. The Moon Cup definitely proved to be one of the hardest cups with me averaging 53.8 points. To no one's surprise, Rainbow Road takes the spot for the hardest track in this cup. Coming into 2023, Nintendo shipped out Wave 4 and with it came the Fruit Cup. The Fruit Cup opens up with Amsterdam Drift, which only went to prove just how awful I am at these tour tracks. Whether this was in the form of sharp turns that were crowded with hazards, the game's physics engine just trolling me straight up, or just me being plain terrible at times. No shot, I just did that. Oh, well. Okay, no. No, I'm not putting this in the video. No shot. This track ended up being a torture chamber for me. Thankfully, Nintendo must have foreseen this outcome or just knew I was dog shit as they followed that hellhole up with the relaxing river park. This track is very simple, the long winding roads are easy to drift around, and outside of these walking piranha guys, there's not really too much to be worried about here. DK's Snowboard Cross, on the other hand, does offer a few more challenges. Being a track from the fan favourite Wii era means I had some considerable experience with it, but the speed boost that comes with 200cc definitely makes certain areas trickier. Obviously the shortcuts exist over the gaps, but the main problem I ran into was finding myself in these snow piles after boosting too fast off the ramps. Honestly, a decently tricky track at least on 200cc. The Fruit Cup ends off with another fresh original track, Yoshi's Island. This also meant that I had no idea what to expect when going into it. Okay, yep, this course f***ing sucks. Nah, but in all seriousness, the first half of this track with the winding road into the water area with the tighter turns and crab guys is decently challenging to manoeuvre around. The latter half counterbalances this with the glider sections resulting in a somewhat difficult yet simple track all around. 
Now after painstakingly racing through this cup 50 times, I ended with an average of 53.51 points. Amsterdam Drift, as I stated before, not only ended up being my torture chamber, but also the most difficult track in the entire cup. The Boomerang Cup is up next. Aussies rise up, am I right? Ooh! <laughs> Ah, uh, anyway, the cup starts with Bangkok Rush, which aesthetically is beautiful. Now despite its layout giving off I'm gonna f you up vibes, the track itself is fairly straightforward, with very wide roads and forgiving turns that don't even require too much brake drifting if I'm being honest. This is probably one of the easier tracks for sure on this car. Well, I guess I spoke too soon as next up we have the 27th Mario Circuit track, which just like all of them is extremely easy. I guess if you're bad, you'll somewhat get hit by these fireballs. Unfortunately, I don't really have any footage. Like I was saying, you really shouldn't be getting hit. Okay, so... Okay, maybe this track is harder than I was giving it credit for. Waluigi Stadium is up next, and surely this one will provide more of a challenge. Honestly, this may be the first instance where going up to 200cc was somehow easier than racing on the original track in 150cc. The roads are still ultra wide, but I swear in Double Dash this mud section was way more pronounced and covered a lot more area. In turn, the turns were a lot sharper around this section, arguably the only challenging section in the entire track is completely gone, meaning that even on 200cc it's far easier than racing on the original in Double Dash or even on the Wii. The cup wraps up with Singapore Speedway, and I know that I was going on about Bangkok Rush looking nice, but this has to be one of the prettiest city tracks in the whole roster. The track also ups the difficulty in this cup with a fresh new layout with each new lap, some of which feature narrow pathing and tighter turns. Overall though, it doesn't really reach the same levels as some of the hardest tracks in the DLC. The Boomerang Cup proved to be one of, if not the easiest cup in the entire game, with me averaging 57.16 points. Singapore Speedway did in fact take this spot for the hardest track, but honestly none of these tracks were especially hard when compared to what we've covered already. Here we have the Feather Cup, and as per usual, this one starts with another tour track. Athens Dash. Now despite having Dash in its name, that's the last thing you'll be doing while racing through this on 200cc. This track has so many obstacles and sharp turns, many of which don't even look like proper turns, or they're hidden away next to what appears to be a straight road. I may or may not have gotten blocked by the numerous pillars or tight doorways on the staircase before the end as well. Honestly, I think I just suck at this track, but it definitely proved to be one of the hardest ones in the entire roster. Next up is a personal favourite of mine from Double Dash, Daisy Cruiser. Now while it was nice to hear that summary music and race through the dining halls again, I have to admit, it wasn't as fun as I remember it being. The track itself isn't too hard, the only section that gave me any trouble was towards the end, where you either have to go underwater in this area with the clams, or take the sharp turns to the left. Regardless of the route you choose, I found I had to brake drift around it, meaning it added a little bit of difficulty. Here we have Moonview Highway. Now so far most of the tracks that we've discussed that involve roads packed full of cars have been rather difficult, but you may be surprised to hear that Moonview Highway is the exact opposite. In fact, it's not challenging in the slightest. Now lore wise, yes I'm making up Mario Kart lore here, but trust me it'll make sense soon. While the other tracks seem to be taking place during peak hour, with an abundance of traffic, it seems we're driving around at midnight in Moonview Highway, and as you'd expect there's hardly anyone driving around at this time just in general. Unfortunately this makes the track a complete joke, the roads are like 2 to 4 lanes wide sometimes, and with no cars on them it's almost impossible to screw up. Squeaky clean sprint caps off this cup, once again I was going in blind. Fortunately enough this track isn't too hard though, a lot of it is just wide roads with lots of areas to trick off from, these don't often lead into sharp turns straight after though so it kind of tapers off a bit on the difficulty side. The hardest area is probably down the plug hole, which opens up to these tight corridors with nails that may mess you up if you're not being careful. I never really realised this when I was playing through it, but who the f*** is leaving their nasty ass toothbrushes in the bathtub, with bath bombs going off at the same time. Overall a charming little track, and while it isn't too challenging, it's certainly fun to race through. The Feather Cup proved to be slightly tougher than I first predicted, no thanks to Athens Dash beating my ass, which unsurprisingly took the spot as the hardest track in this cup. We've now arrived at the dark horse of this whole experiment, the Cherry Cup. The cup starts off with Los Angeles laps. God, I'm getting shivers just remembering back to this one. It starts off quite tame, and for about 10 seconds I was feeling pretty good. Ah oh, shit. Yep. Yeah, it doesn't get any better from here either. There are quite a few tight zigzag turns through Beverly Hills, and to top it all off, the last lap has you going through an oil field, which not only features narrow roads, but half of them are blocked off by these rigs. 
Not the easiest track, that's for sure. You know what is an easy track though? Sunset Wilds. Honestly, if you told me this was just Mario Circuit 3, but during the afternoon, I'd probably believe you. The layout is suspiciously similar with a track containing one sharp turn that you need to break drift around. It is a little harder because you've got these mining shy guys and these little areas with the mud and oil, but really that's not saying too much. Oh baby, Cooper Cape. Who didn't love this track on the Wii? I'm not gonna lie though, I don't remember struggling too much on this track back then, so why does it feel so much harder here? Also, where are the rapids in the pipes? You know, the ones that sped you up? In theory, this would most likely make the track even harder, but I felt like it was the whole reason this track was created in the first place. It was to show off the rapids and their gameplay effects. I feel like now that they don't exist, I spend more time going up the sides of the walls, which just kind of throws me off even more. Vancouver Velocity rounds out what is already a challenging cup. The question is though, does this track continue that trend? Oh, yep, seems like it does. Honestly, it's hard to describe why this track is more difficult than others. Yes, it has narrower roads, which in turn leads to more bullshit hitting you, but the layout itself isn't particularly challenging. For whatever reason though, I just sucked ass on here. I, I don't know, guys. Here's where things get interesting though. Coming out of the Cherry Cup, I ended up averaging 53.04 points, an embarrassingly low average for such a random cup. This cup had a lot of tougher tracks, but the one that gave me the most trouble ended up being Los Angeles laps. We're in the final stretch here, and starting us off is the Acorn Cup. As is customary by this point, the tour track Rome Avanti takes the first spot in this cup. This one's a bit hit or miss to be honest in my opinion. I believe at first it's quite challenging, the turns aren't necessarily sharp, but the fact that there are so many roundabouts, many of which have other drivers going the opposite direction to you, it can be quite confusing at first and kind of mess you up on where to go. Once you learn the layout though, the track isn't actually that bad. Next up we have DK Mountain, a personal favourite of mine, so I get to say hi to Mr Mountain up here no matter how angry he is. Driving down the mountain itself though is fairly easy. The only challenging area is towards the bottom where you have these long winding turns that often require brake drifting. The thing is, they're not abrupt or particularly sharp and they have a good spacing between each of them. The roads themselves are also very wide giving you plenty of wiggle room. All of these things make for a classic track that isn't particularly hard either. Daisy Circuit. This may be a hot take, but this track's theme has to be one of the best in the entire series. The track itself though doesn't quite hit the same standards. It's fun to race through, sure, but it's very basic with wide roads and long stretched out turns that are perfect for drifting without ever needing to break. It's definitely one of the easiest tracks in the DLC and, you know, maybe in the entire game. The Acorn Cup finishes off with yet another fresh new track, Piranha Plant Cove. This track, like a few of the city courses in Calamari Desert, changes lap by lap, with each lap being vastly different from the others. In saying this, this means that certain laps are most likely harder than others. Lap 1 in particular is probably the easiest, there aren't any real sharp turns, and the roads give plenty of breathing room. Laps 2 and 3 though are definitely harder to separate, with both having numerous hazards packed into them with harder turns to manoeuvre around. I don't think it's the most difficult track by any means, maybe more so a middle of the pack track. Now the Acorn Cup proved to be one of the easier tracks all around, with me averaging 56.43 points after 50 runs. The tracks themselves were all relatively similar in terms of difficulty, with Rome Avanti slightly edging out the rest as the most difficult track. We've arrived at the very last cup, the Spiny Cup, or as I like to call it, the piece de resistance. The Spiny Cup starts us off with Madrid Drive, which if I'm being honest, is a pretty easy course. That isn't to say there aren't a few tricky areas, but in comparison to a lot of other tracks, these aren't nearly as tough to learn. The next track, Rosalina's Ice World, would definitely turn up the heat though. The track starts with a very narrow type turn that has more gap than track. That's essentially what you'll be struggling with throughout this track. The ice theme also means the track becomes slippery in sections, which doesn't really pair well with a bunch of cracks in the wall. You don't want to know how many times I almost fell off. Ah, oh, someone please save me, I'm so sick of playing this f***ing game! Yeah, a pretty challenging track all things considered. Moving on, we come to Bowser's Castle 3, which has had quite a significant clock up from his earlier days. Despite this clock up though, the layout of the track unfortunately limits just how difficult a Bowser's Castle track can be. Now there is arguably one tough section, that being those thin ledges you have to land on after the ramps, but unless you're a dumbass, these shouldn't really give you any problems. <laughs> Oh my god, I didn't even move. Now what better way to end the whole booster pass than with the Rainbow Road track from the second most popular Mario Kart game in the series, Super Circuit. What? In all seriousness though, we're talking about the reiteration of Rainbow Road, which like many of the others features a cosmic journey through the stars, just with very few safety regulations. Now there are a few railings, but none of them are placed around the tighter turns, meaning at times it's not uncommon for you to fly off the track. 
I don't believe it's nearly as difficult as 3DS's iteration, but I do think it lives up to that fabled name. The Spiny Cup offered a decent challenge with me averaging 53.35 points. Rainbow Road did actually end up taking the top spot as the most difficult track of the cup, but not by much, with Rosalina's Ice World close behind. Now with all 2400 races tallied up and averaged, we can now say for certain how each of these cups ranks up against each other in terms of difficulty. The easiest cup ended up being the Boomerang Cup with an average of 57.16 points. This was then followed up by the Acorn Cup, and then the Turnip Cup, the Golden Dash Cup, the Rock Cup, and then the Propeller Cup. Moving on into the upper echelon, we start with the Feather Cup with an average of 54.35 points, before moving through to the Lucky Cat Cup and then the Moon Cup. The top three hardest cups were the Fruit Cup with an abysmal average of 53.51 points. This was then topped by the Spiny Cup with an average of 53.35 points, meaning the hardest boost to pass cup based on the findings in this experiment was the Cherry Cup with a woeful average of just 50. 53.0 points. Honestly, if you had me predict what I thought would end up being the hardest before running this experiment, the Cherry Cup would be one of the last I'd choose. I mean, it doesn't even have a rainbow road, like how's that even possible? A few extra stats that I thought I'd add in just in case anyone's interested. These were the top 5 hardest courses, my average placements for each of them. Yes, I suck ass at Ninja Hideaway, that course bodied me for hours on end and I actually enjoyed it. On the other hand, these were the top 5 easiest courses and my average placements for them. A lot of them, like you'd expect, are just circuit type tracks that don't really offer too much outside of their simple layouts. I should mention that this is all subjective, what I found difficult isn't going to be what you find difficult. Now, the results may vary greatly if you were to run a similar test. I've left the Excel spreadsheet in the description for anyone that actually wants to see how it was all calculated and my specific placements for each race. I do hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you did please do consider subscribing and liking the video, it would mean a lot. I hope to see you all in the next one.